It is a surah which was revealed in Makkah. It has seven stanzas and 112 verses, 21st by the order of arrangement and 73rd by the order of revolution. The name of the surah derives from the fact that in the chapter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has narrated the events in the life of few prophets. And the time period of the revolution is the middle period of the stay in Mecca. The basic topics of the surah being the invitation towards belief in the oneness of Allah, belief in the prophethood of Prophet Sallallahu and belief and fear of hereafter. The basic concept uh, which we are going to discuss and learn from the surah is that this world is a period of trial. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts his bondsmen to trial in various manners, like by blessing them and showering his bounties on them. The second is by depriving them and or by taking away his blessings from them and last but not the least, showering blessings after being deprived. And then uh, explaining and narrating the events in the life of the prophets, the manner with which they behaved in different trials will teach us the adopted, the, the manner we need to adopt in various trials of life also. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The time of their account has approached for the people while they are in heedlessness turning away. No mention comes to them anew from their Lord, except that they listen to it while they are at play. With their hearts distracted, those who wrong conceal their private conversations, saying, Is this prophet except a human being like you? So would you approach magic while you are aware of it? Throughout in the chapter, we will go through verses where uh, the people of uh, the period of Prophet Wasallam they were putting allegations on him. They would call him a poet, labeling Quran, which he was presenting as a poetry. They would call him a magician, a spell caster, sometimes Nauzubillah calling him what? A person who was mentally insane. Then they used to mock him and ask questions that why was he human? How could he be a prophet if he was a human? Why wasn't he given or uh, an accompanying angel with him? Why wasn't he blessed with wealth or treasures? And why wasn't he a tribal leader? Leader if he had happened to be a prophet. So there have been different allegations and uh, mockings by the people of Quraysh, which are mentioned in the surah. The prophet said, my Lord knows whatever is said through, whatever is said throughout the heaven and the earth, and he is the hearing and the knowing. But they say the revelation is but a mixture of false dreams. Rather, he has invented it. Rather, he is a poet. So let him bring us a sign just as the previous messengers were sent with miracles. Not a single city which we destroyed believed before them. So they will so will they believe and be sent not before you except men to whom we revealed the messages. So ask the people of messages if you do not know. And we did not make the prophets form, uh, prophets forms not eating food nor they were immortal on earth. Then we fulfilled for them the promise and we saved them and whom we willed and destroyed the transgressors. We have certainly sent down to you a book in which is your mention. Then will you not reason? And how many a city which was unjust have we shattered and produced after it another people? And when its inhabitants perceived our punishment, at once they fled from it. Some angels said, do not flee, but return to where you were given luxury and your homes. Perhaps you will be questioned. They say, they said, oh, woe to us. Indeed, we were wrongdoers. And that declaration of theirs did not cease until we made them as a harvest mowed down, extinguished like a fire. 
and we did not create the heaven and the earth and that between them in a play. Had we intended to take a diversion, we could have taken it from what is with us if indeed we were to do so. Rather, we dash the truth upon falsehood and it destroys it and thereupon it departs. And for you is destruction from what? From that which you describe. To him belongs whoever is in the heavens and the earth and those near him are not prevented by arrogance from his worship, nor do they tire. They exalt him night and day. What is this? Who, who is this Allah mentioning? The angels. They exalt him night and day and do not slacken or have men taken for themselves gods from the earth who resurrected the death. Had there been within the heavens and the earth gods besides Allah, they both would have been ruined. So exalted is Allah, the Lord of the throne, about what they describe. He is not questioned about what he does, but they will be questioned. Or have they taken gods besides him? Say, produce your proof. This Quran is the message for those with me and the message for those before me. But most of them do not know the truth. So they are turning away. And we sent not before you any messenger except that we revealed to him that there is no deity except me, so worship me. And they say, the most merciful has taken a son. Exalted is he, rather they are but honored servants. They cannot precede him in word and they act by his command. And he knows what is presently before them and what will be after them and they cannot intercede except on behalf of one whom he approves and they from fear of him are apprehensive and whoever of them should say indeed I am God besides him that one he, we would recompense with hell thus do we recompense the wrongdoers have those who disbelieve not considered that the heavens and the earth were joined in uh, were a joined entity and we separated them and made from them and made from water everything and uh, every living thing then will they not believe and we placed within the earth firmly set mountains lest it should shift with them. And we made therein mountain passes as roads that they might be guided. And we made the sky a protected ceiling, but they from its signs are turning away. And it is he who created the night and the day and the sun and the moon. All heavenly bodies in an orbit are swimming and we did not grant to any man before you eternity on earth. So if you die, would they be eternal? Every soul will taste death. Allahumma a'ini ala ghamaratil maut wa saqaratil maut. And we test you with evil and with good as a trial. And to us, you will be returned. And when those who disbelieve see you, they take you not except in ridicule, saying, is this the one who insults your goals? And they are at the mention of the most merciful disbelievers. Man was created of haste. I will show you my signs. So do not, <coughs> so do not impatiently urge me. And they say, when is this promise if you should be truthful? If those who disbelieved but knew the time when they will not avert the fire from their faces or from their backs and they will not be aided. Allahumma ajirna min nar Rather, it will come to them unexpectedly and bewilder them and they will not be able to repel it, nor will they be reprieved. And already were messengers ridiculed before you, but those who mocked them were enveloped by what they used to ridicule. Say, who can protect you at night or by day from the most merciful, but they are from the remembrance of their law turning away. Or do they have gods to defend them other than us? They are unable even to help themselves, nor can they be protected from us. 
But on the contrary, we have provided good things for these disbelievers and their fathers until life was prolonged for them. Then do they not see that we set upon the land, reducing it from its borders? So it is they who will overcome. Say, I only warn you by revelation, but the deaf do not hear the call when they are warned. And if as much as a whiff of the punishment of your lords should touch them, they would surely say, oh, woe to us. Indeed, we have been wrongdoers. And we place the scales. We place the scales of justice for the day of resurrection. So no soul will be treated unjustly at all. And if there is even the weight of a mustard seed, we will bring it forth. And sufficient are we as an accountant. And we had already given Musa salam, and Harun salam, the criteria and a light and a reminder for the righteous who fear their Lord unseen while they are of the hour apprehensive. And this Quran is a blessed message which we have sent down. And then are you with it unacquainted? Verse number 51. And we had certainly given Ibrahim salam his sound judgment before, and we were of him well known, well knowing. When he said to his father and his people, what are these statues to which you are devoted? So we learn from here the conditions which uh, Hazrat Ibrahim salam was exposed to when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with the awareness of the attributes of Allah and the belief in the oneness of Allah. He did not keep it to himself. Instead, he introduced and he invited all those around him. So here he is asking his father and his people why they had devoted themselves to the worship of the idols. Verse number 53, they said, we found our fathers worshippers of them. So they came out with a reason and a logic that they had just blindly followed their ancestors. He said, you were certainly, you and your fathers, in a manifest error. They said, have you come to us with truth or you of those who jest? He said, no, rather your Lord is the Lord of heavens and the earth who created them. And I to that am of those who testify. Verse 57, and I swear by Allah, I will surely plan against your idols after you have turned and gone away. So we learn how did he do that? So he made them into fragments, except a large one among them, that they might return to it and question. Now, what happened was that despite such a logical invitation to all the people and his father, the people failed to believe. Hazrat Isa alayhi salam was disgusted. He was simply disgusted at their response. And then he decided to demolish all the idols and the statues. So when the people of the city, they had gone out for a festival and they had left the city, he silently entered the temple, the temple where they had their idols and the statues. And uh, initially, we will learn from some other chapters, he tried to converse with them. But obviously, very obviously, they did not give any response. So he was simply outraged. And then he started breaking all the idols. And completing his task, he put the axe on the shoulder of the biggest idol. Verse 59, they said, who has done this to our gods? Indeed, he is of the wrongdoers. They said, we heard a young man mention them who is called Ibrahim. They said, then bring him before the eyes of the people that they may testify. They said, have you done this to our gods, O Ibrahim? He said, rather this, the largest of them did it. So ask them if they should be able to speak. So they returned to blaming themselves and said to each other, indeed, you are the wrongdoers. Then they reversed themselves saying, you, you have already known that these do not speak. He said, then do you worship instead of Allah, that which does not benefit you at all or harm you? 
off to you and to what you worship instead of Allah, then will you not use reason? So here he, uh, they were all shocked to see the condition of their idols when they returned. And they started investigating who had done all this. <coughs> and when Hazrat Ibrahim salam, was called, he tried to make them realize how foolish they were being. The foolishness of their behavior tried to motivate them to think rationally and logically and to just leave uh, worshipping all these idols and to have faith in the oneness of Allah. What did they say? They said, burn him and support your laws if you, if you were to act. Allahu Akbar. They were all agitated by Hazrat Ibrahim's behavior and they decided to burn him to death. And why did they do this? They did this for they, it seemed that this was the only, only solution to save and to help their gods. But they, they had lost their rationality and their sense. They, 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 they simply didn't realize what sort of gods were they that who required the support of their bondsmen for their protection. And then they decided to light up a huge fire and then throw Hazrat Ibrahim salam in it. And everyone considered it as a religious duty and as a noble deed. And they all started the collecting for the fire. And you know what? Even his near and dear ones took part. How painful, how painful it must have been, how it must have hurt him, how scary the whole plan was. But Hazrat Ibrahim salam, was what? He was patient. He was steadfast. And he totally relied on Allah. All the animals, they made effort to blow off the fire. Even a small sparrow brought a few drops of water to play her role. And then they placed him in a large catapult to be thrown in the fire. And at that time, Hazrat Jibreel came over to him and inquired if he wanted that the locality should be punished and they should be destroyed. But then Hazrat Ibrahim salam asked Hazrat Jibreel, do let me know if my war, if my Lord is watching, if my Lord is seeing all this. Hazrat Jibrail alayhi salam returned to Allah and then came back to Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam and he told that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that, Oh Ibrahim, you are in our sight. And then Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam in complete reliance said, Jibrail, then you just stay away from between me and my my Lord, this is belief, this is faith, and this is reliance and recognition of the powers of Allah. So immense was the sacrifice, so remarkable was the patience, so exemplary was the steadfastness that the help of Allah came as a miracle. When they said, burn him and support your gods if you were to act, what did Allah say? Verse 69, Allah said, Ya naru kuni baradan wasalaman ala Ibrahim. Allah said, O fire, be coolness and safety upon Ibrahim. The fire was ordered to cool down for Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam. For whom? For the person who was the friend of Allah. And who was the friend of Allah? Who was obedient to Allah who was steadfast in his obedience, who was patient and who relied on Allah. What happened then? And they intended for him harm, but we made for them the, for we made them the greatest losers. The worst of enemy intends, but the worst of enemy can't harm. That is what we learn because what happens is what Allah wills. So, that is why Allah says, فَلَا تَخْشَوْهُمْ وَخْشَوْ نِيلِي أُتِمَّ نِعْمَتِي وَلَا أَلَّكُمْ تَحْتَدُونَ Don't fear them, fear me. Remember how ever powerful, how ever great, how ever bitter an enemy be, will not be able to harm until and unless Allah Almighty wills. When Hazrat Ibrahim stuck up so boldly, so courageously, for the invitations of the oneness of Allah and eradication of polytheism, presenting everything for his sacrifice. 
for the cause of Allah, what did Allah reward him with? And what did he receive? Allah says, and we delivered him and Luth to the land which we had blessed for the worlds. And we gave him Ishaq and Yaqub in addition. And all of them we made righteous and we made them leaders guiding by our command. And we inspired to them the doing of good deeds, establishment of prayer and giving of zakah. And they were worshippers of us. And to Luth we gave judgment and knowledge and we saved him from the city that was committing wicked deeds. Indeed, they were people of evil, defiantly disobedient. And we admitted him in our mercy. Indeed, he was of the righteous. And mention knew when he called to Allah before that time. So we responded to him and saved him and his family from the great flood. And we saved him from the people who denied our signs. Indeed, they were a people of evil. So we drowned them all together. Verse 78, and mention Daud alayhi salam and Hazrat Sulaiman alayhi salam, when they judged concerning the fields, when the sheep of the people overran it at night, and we were witness to their judgment. And we gave understanding of the case to Hazrat Sulaiman, and to each of them we gave judgment and knowledge, and we subjected the mountains to exalt us along with Dawud and also the birds, and we were doing that. And we taught him the fashioning of coats of armor to protect you from your enemy in a battle, and so that you will be grateful. And to Sulaiman, we subjected the winds, blowing forcibly proceeding by his commands towards the land which we had blessed and we are ever of all things knowing. So in these verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about how he had blessed the father, Hazrat Dawud alayhi salam, and the son, Hazrat Suleiman alayhi salam. He had blessed them with plenty of his blessings, but they were both grateful to Allah. And being grateful to Allah, as we've talked earlier also, does not only mean being grateful by word of mouth, but being grateful by what? By one's behavior and by one's deeds also. By one's activities also, we need to show our gratitude. Grateful behavior means what? That the person should use the blessings of Allah according to the orders and limits set by Allah and also in the path of Allah. So, Hazrat Dawood and Hazrat Sulaiman alayhi salam, they used the blessings of Allah to serve humanity, to help and support all those around them. For example, like Allah has mentioned this verse number 78 and 79 that um, Allah had blessed them with comprehension. Allah, has, Allah had blessed them with comprehension and wisdom to make fair decisions. So the verse narrates uh, that, that there was an issue which was brought for settlement to Hazrat Dawud salam. And the issue was that a person's goats had entered his neighbor's fields and had ruined all the fields. And uh, Hazrat Dawud salam he had given the verdict and he gave the decision that the person whose goats had spoiled the crops should be taken. All the goats should be taken and given to the person whose crops had been spoiled to compensate for the loss and to punish the man who had not been mindful and vigilant regarding his, uh, regarding his goats. So they were not really satisfied with the decision. And the case was then taken to Hazrat Sulaiman alayhi salam, who with his greater wisdom, he came up with an even balanced, even more balanced and a fair decision. His verdict was that the goats should be handed over to the farmer till the master of the goats works up at the farm and the fields to grow up the crops. And when the crops, they will reach the state in which the field was spoiled, then his goats, they will be returned back. So this was an even fairer and more just and a balanced decision. But the person, uh, the lesson we learn is that all the capabilities and positions we have are the blessings of the merciful Allah. So, to express our gratitude, we need to use them for the service of his bondsmen in the path of Allah and according to the limits of Allah. 
And of the devils were those who had died for him and did work other than that, and we were of them a guardian. Verse number 83, and mention, and mention the story of whom Hazrat Ayyub alayhi salam, when he called to his Lord, and he said, what? Rabbianni masaniya zurru wa anta arhamur rahimin. Indeed, adversity has touched me and you are most merciful of the merciful. So we responded to him and removed what afflicted him of adversity. And we gave him back his family and the like thereof with them as mercy from us and a reminder for the worshippers of Allah. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning about Hazrat Ayyub alayhi salam. He was a prophet sent to the people of Bani Israel and uh, most probably during the 19th, 9th century. And uh, some of uh, the people say that he was in a period before, uh, before Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. And according to some, he was a contemporary of Hazrat Dawood alayhi salam and Hazrat Suleiman alayhi salam. But obviously, they're different opinions. He has been mentioned in the verses of the New Testament also. And it is reported that he belonged to a family of Esu who were the sons of Hazrat uh, Ishaq alayhi salam. The area in which he was sent to is usually explained as Egypt, and some also consider that it, uh, he was sent to people of Arabia. And uh, his, uh, he has been mentioned in Surah Nisa and Surah An'am also. And uh, his story has been explained in uh, in the Quran and also by the traditions of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in fact, his story is a story of gratitude, of patience, and of remembrance of Allah. Hazrat Adi bin Hatim radiallahu ta'ala and who has reported how Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has narrated, and I shall be narrating the whole events in my words indirectly also. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that he was like one of the wealthiest men in the East. And uh, he had been blessed by various farms and he had a flourishing trade and he had been blessed with fertile lands and huge amount of immense amount of agricultural fields, making him rich and wealthy. And he had plenty of cattle also, and he had a huge family. So despite being so blessed, he was not one of those who had just uh, stayed busy and involved in his worldly affairs and uh, just busy looking after and maintaining his possessions and properties. Instead, he used to spend long hours worshipping his merciful Rab. And uh, people around you, uh, around um, Hazrat Ayyub alayhi salam, used to comment that if Hazrat Ayyub alayhi salam spends time in worship, he very much can because he is free and he has all the time and energy in the world. And we have to spend our time and energy for earning our livelihood so we can worship Allah to that extent. Actually, this was not the case. So to prove to these people and also to put Hazrat Ayub salam into trial, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took back all his blessings one after the other. His land became barren and infertile, and there was no yield. He suffered heavy losses in his trade, and all the cattle died. Many of his family members also passed away. So there he was, left deprived by Allah. And this again was a trial. Being blessed was a trial, and taking back the blessings after being blessed was a trial. He was left deprived all by himself, solitary soul. And then finally, the only thing left was his health was also taken away. He fell sick with boils, with pustules, with blisters all over his body and all full of pus and fluid oozing out. What a situation. All deprived, solitude, no one around him to console him, to feed him, to take care of. And even in this pathetic situation, Hazrat Ayyub salam was still worshipping Allah and still remembering and still grateful and patient. 
He said, O oh Allah, you know that when I had plenty of blessings, I used to stand for your worship for long hours, leaving my bed, my soft and cozy bed at night, telling myself that I had not been sent down for these luxuries. But now, when I, but then, but then I had all those things, I was busy and my mind was preoccupied and I was committed to all those things. But now you have taken back all these things from me and now I am all free without any involvement, without any commitment. And now there is nothing intervening between you and me. I am totally free for you. Oh Allah, if shaitan realizes how you have blessed me in this deprived state, he will envy me. Oh Allah, protect me from the enmities and from the attacks of shaitan. Subhanallah. This is called gratitude. This is how we need to remember Allah. And this is what patience is. And then the, in this agony and in this misery of his illness, he remembered Allah. And he supplicated to his merciful Ashafi Rabb. And he supplicated asking for health. And how beautifully he supplicated by just saying, Rabbi Anni Masani Azuru wa Anta Arhamur Rahimin. What a beautiful style of supplication. Hazrat Ayyub salam, when making dua for his recovery, he just explains to Allah his state and his adversity. And that's all, nothing more. Because he believed in the attributes of Allah. He knew that he is all seeing, all hearing, all knowing, all wise and all loving. The most merciful and the most loving. So he just knew he need not elaborate on what he needs. He did not elaborate on what he wanted or what he desired because Allah knows who's closer than our jubiler way. So remember to recite this dua when sick, when ailing. It is a supplication which was heard, which reached the throne of Allah, which was accepted and which was granted. And now in this verse 84, when Allah says that Allah responded to him and was removed what he was afflicted with, what did he do? Allah said, Fastajabna lahu. And that what happened? Fakashafna. Allah removed all the adversities which had been afflicted. And then he was blessed all over again. How did this happen? In Bukhari, it has been reported that Hazrat Ayub salam was taking bath and he was in his courtyard and a cloud came above his house and it started pouring a rain of golden butterflies. And Hazrat Ayub salam started collecting them. And it was asked, is this greed? Is this lust of wealth? And he answered, no, Allah, I am gathering this out of love of your blessings and mercy. The lesson is to stay content, peaceful, grateful, patient in all the conditions, in all the states, all the ages, always, everywhere, every time, to be content with the decisions of Allah and to be obedient and mindful of the worships of Allah in all the conditions, in all the situations. Rabbi Aini ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Verse 85 and mention Ismail and Idris and Zilkifl all were of the patience. Patience, an essential trait of all the prophets of Allah. And the reward of patience is what? We admitted them into our mercy. Indeed, they were of the righteous. Allahumma ja'alni saburam wa ja'alni shakura. Verse 87, and mentioned the man of the fish when he went off in anger and thought that we would not decree anything upon them. And he called out within the darkness, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu mina zwalimeen. There's no deity except you. Exalted are you. Indeed, I have been of the wrong tours. So we responded to him and saved him from the distress. And do we save the believers? 
So now here is the narration of whom Zanun, the man of the fish. His name has been mentioned in the Quran, in the verses of the Quran, where we learn in um, Surah Yunus, in Surah Suafat, and here in Surah Anbiya also. And he has been called as Zunun. He has been called as Sahibul Qud, and also by his name, Yunus alayhi salam. His period was uh, 784 to 760 BC. That is before Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. And his land was, he has been known as Yunus ibn Mata. And uh, he was uh, sent to the people of the city of Nenwa. And Nenwa was a city in the northern Iraq. And the remnants of the city still exist on the eastern bank of Tigris. And uh, the current area is the city of Mosul. And there is a place which is known as the station of Hazrat Yunus alayhi salam in the city of, Mun uh, in the city of Mosul. Now, this uh, city of Nenva had a population of hundreds of thousands of people, and they were all they were all indulging in worshiping idols, and the city was filled with idols. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in this city, which was booming with idol worship, he he chose among the people from. Uh, Nenva. He was born and bred in Nenva. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Hazrat uh, Yunus al-Islam from among them to uh, spread the light of Islam in the city. And uh, he immediately set upon to fulfill the, uh, the orders and the invitations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the people of Nenva rejected all what he was inviting them to. Initially, he was not deterred and he kept on calling them and kept on reminding them of the terrible wrath of Allah that was directed towards the Ad and the Samud and the people of Nu. But they still kept on rejecting them. And they would say that we and our forefathers, they worship these gods so for many years and no harm has come to them, uh, says come to them or come to us also. So you go ahead and let it happen, whatever you scare us off. And finally, Hazrat Yunus salam, was disheartened and he gave up his people. And uh, what he did humanly wrong was that without waiting for the permission of Allah or for the order of Allah for immigration, he decided to leave the city of Nenva in hope of finding a community further away who would or who might accept the invitation. So he left the people of Nanra and uh, before the order of Allah. What happened to the people of Nanra after him was that uh, there was the, the calm skies over the city. They turned into red clouds and they were showing the anger of Allah. And the clouds showed as if the, they, they were going to spit the wrath of Allah. And the men and the women, they all remembered Hazrat Yunus alayhi salam's warnings of Allah's punishment and they feared the punish of uh, the wrath of Allah. So the women and the children and the men folk, they all gathered at the mountain tops and they kneeled down, they fell down on their knees and they were all crying and they were all, they all raised their hands and they were supplicating and they were seeking forgiveness and the children and the women were also crying and seeking forgiveness and then Allah was touched. Allah was touched with this, scene, uh, this sincere repentance and then Allah lift his, lifted his punishment and forgave all these people and showered his blessings upon them and the skies cleared off and then the people prayed for the safe return of their beloved prophet Yunus alayhi salam and so that he could come back and they could he could guide them to the, uh, to the right path and the path of Allah. And in the meantime, what happened to Hazrat Yunus alayhi salam was that when he left Nainwa, he boarded a passenger ship. And the intention was of uh, traveling far away from his people so that he would get to a locality or a community who might accept the, uh, the teachings of Allah. Now, during the day, the ship traveled calmly in the waters. But when the night closed in, there was a storm and the ship started rocking wildly to and fro. 
the crew and the passengers began to fear for their lives and uh, the sea water it gradually began began flooding into the deck and the ship started sinking out of the weight of water so the captain initially uh, ordered all of the men to throw away their luggage and their excess load so as to uh, decrease the burden on the ship so they all threw away all the luggages and all the things they had but the ship continued to sink because it was still too heavy so the last resort the captain had was to throw a person out of the ship to sacrifice the life of one man to save the life of the crew so according to the custom the captain decided to draw lots to choose who out of the passengers will be thrown to save the rest of the crew and the lots were cast and prophet yunus's name came and the men knew that he was young and he was right he is an honest and blessed so they refused to throw him out and the it was agreed to draw the lots again so the lots were casted again and again his name appeared the men refused to throw him and they said that we're not going to get rid of him because he is our blessing on the board and he is the best man we have on the board and we're not going to get rid of him so the due the lots again for the third time and again his name came so and now has it you knew that this was the verdict of allah and uh, he himself he jumped out of the ship in the dark night in the angry ocean middle of the night and then with allah's command the largest whale in the ocean came up and swallowed yunus alay salam just as he hit the water and there he lay unconscious and when he awoke he found himself enveloped by sheer darkness initially he thought that he was in his grave but then when he remembered everything he he woke he realized that he was not in his grave but he was in the stomach of that large whale fish which swallowed it and deep down deep down in the darkness of the ocean and in the water in the stomach of the whale hazrat yunus alay salam prostrated to allah and then he recited this verse that i am prostrating to you in a place where no one has prostrated to you before in the stomach of the whale and he called out reciting these verses and nan has the right to be worshiped by you glorified is you truly i have been among the wrong doers because this was what he when he realized that he had been he had done indecent haste in proceeding before waiting for the orders of allah he realized that he had done a folly and he had done something wrong so he accepted he confessed he regretted he seeked forgiveness and then he was forgiven when allah subhanahu wa taala he cried out to allah subhanahu wa taala seeking forgiveness of what he had happened what he had done and we all know inna allah yuhibbu at-tawwabin wa yuhibbu al-mutatakhirin allah loves those who seek forgiveness and we also know that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has told us that who makes it a routine to seek forgiveness any person who makes it a routine to seek forgiveness allah does what allah blesses him with contentment of his soul number 2 allah eases him out of his misery and adversities and number 3 allah provides him sustenance from where he can't even imagine and now we will learn that what happened to hazrat yunus alay salam was actually a narration of this hadith it was an explanation provides an explanation of the words of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so exactly the same happened when hazrat yunus alay salam he realized that he had disobeyed in haste and he confessed and he asked for forgiveness then what happened deep down in the ocean inside the fish darkness water solitude despair no hope of survival he stayed peace he stayed peace and he got calmness why allah bi zikrillah tatma'innu al-qulub it was the wonder of remembrance of allah and it was the miracle of seeking forgiveness that he stayed peaceful and he stayed calm then the second part of the hadith allah eased him out of the hardship did it seem possible did it seem possible that he'll be able to come out of the whale where he was 
Has it ever happened? It seemed like next to impossible, but it became possible as Allah, because of seeking forgiveness of Hazrat, of Hazrat Yunus alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the veil and it, it swam up to the, to the shore and ejected and threw out, threw out Hazrat Yunus alayhi salam on the seashore. This was the result of what? Seeking forgiveness easing out the crises. And then the third part of the hadith that Allah will provide for him sustenance from where he will not even imagine. Hazrat Yunus alayhi salam was all by himself, extremely weak, all his skin debrided because of the acid in the stomach of the fish. But help and sustenance of Allah was extended to him for whom who had asked for forgiveness. He lay on the seashore and a broad-leaved creeper on which the pumpkins grew. It had broad leaves. It grew and provided him shade. Moreover, we also know that leaves of the pumpkin creeper also act as a repellent for the flies and the insect. And this would do what? This would prevent infection and aid in healing of all the wounds has it um, Yunus al Islam had. And what else? By the order, by the order of the merciful sustainer, who no doubt is all forgiving. A she deer used to come, a she deer used to come morning and evening and used to feed him milk. Subhanallah. Remember, Allah never leaves his bondsmen. Trials come, but they are surely temporary. During the trial, Allah sees, hears, knows all the behavior of the person in trial. During a trial, one who stays steadfast in obedience is patience, relies, and returns to Allah, asking for forgiveness, supplicating towards his Lord. Then Allah loves those who repent, seek forgiveness, supplicate, remember him in all conditions. And we learn that to err is to is human. To err is human. But as Prophet وسلم, has said, Kullu bani adama khattan, khayrul that all human beings will err, but the best of those who err are those who seek forgiveness. That is why Allah says, Ya Yuhallazina Amanu Tubu illallahi jamiya la allakum tufrihun. Oh, you people, oh, you believer, repent towards Allah so that you may succeed. And Allah warns, Those who do not repent and those who do not seek forgiveness, they are the wrongdoers. Some people, rather than learning all these morals from the story of Hazrat Yunus alayhi salam, they start doing what? They try to mimic the exact behavior of Hazrat Yunus alayhi salam in their periods of crises. Things like arranging a gathering and reciting the words of Hazrat Yunus alayhi salam like 10 million times. And some people also do what? Mimic to the finest details. They they in a dark room and uh, in uh, they start reciting on a string, string of bees placed in a bowl of water, seeming trying to do what? Trying to simulate the conditions. No, this is not what is needed. It is not what is needed. We don't need counting or repetition of the recital of the verses which has been copied instead. The behavior, the behavior of Hazrat Yunus alayhi salam the behavior of identification of the sin, of confession of the sin, regret, seeking of forgiveness with intention, and dua of refraining from the sin is what is needed. Allahumma ja'alni min al-tawwabina wa ja'alni min al-mutatakhireen. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zwalimeen. Rabbi ghfir warham wa anta khayru rahimeen. Astaghfirullah Rabbi min kulli zambin wa atubu alayk. Allahumma innaka afuvan kareemun tuhibbul affa. Fa'fu anna, fa'fu anna, fa'fu anna. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Allahumma khfirli. Allahumma khfirli. Allahumma khfir lana walil mu'minina wal mu'minat. Wal muslimina wal muslimat. Verse 89. And mention...
and mention Hazrat Zakaria when he called to his Lord, My Lord, do not leave me alone with no heirs, while you are the best of inheritors. A beautiful supplication when we want offsprings and heirs. Verse 90, so we responded to him and we gave to him whom Hazrat Yahya salam, and amended for him his wife. Indeed, they used to hasten good deeds and supplicate us in hope and fear, and they were to us humbly submissive. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning the good traits and manners of Hazrat Zakaria alayhi salam that they used to supplicate and why was their supplication heard? Because they used to do good deeds, they used to fear Allah and they used to hasten in the obedience of Allah and mention the one who guarded her chastity. Who is this? Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam. So we blew into her garment through our angel Jibra'il and we made her and her son, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, a sign for the worlds. Indeed, this your religion is one religion, and I am your Lord, so worship me. And yet they divided their affairs among themselves, but all to us will return. So whoever does righteous deeds, while he is a believer, no denial will there be for his effort. And indeed, we of it are recorders. And there is prohibition upon the people of a city which we have destroyed that they will ever return. Until when the dam of uh, when the dam of Yajuj and Majuj has been opened and they from every elevation descended, so Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has again uh, mentioned about the Yajuj and Majuj who will come when they will come before the uh, the signs of resurrection have ended. And when the true promise has approached, then suddenly the eyes of those who disbelieved will be staring in horror while they say, Oh, woe to us. He, we had been unmindful of this. Rather, we were drawn to us. Indeed, you disbelievers and what you worship other than Allah are the firewood of hell. Allahumma ajirna minan nar. You will be coming to enter it. Had these false deities been actual gods, they would have come to it but all are eternal therein but for them there is heavy sighing and they therein will not hear indeed those for whom the best reward has proceeded from us they are from it far removed and they will not hear its sound they, while they are in that which their souls desires abiding eternally they will not be grieved by the greatest terror and the angels will meet them saying this is your death Day which you have been promised, the day when we will fold the heaven like the folding of a written sheet for the records, and we began the first creation, we will repeat it. That is a promise of binding upon us. Indeed, we will do it. And we have already written in the book of Zabur after the previous mentions that the land of paradise in, is inherited by my righteous servants. Allahumma ja'alla minhum rabbibni li'aindaka baytan fil jannah. Indeed, in this Quran is notification for worshipping people. And we have not sent you except as a mercy to the worlds, say, it is not revealed to me that your God is but what God. So will, so will you be Muslims in submission to him? But if they turn away, then say, I have announced to all of you equally, and I know not whether near or far is that which you are promised. Indeed, he knows what is declared of speech, and he knows what you can, what you conceal, and I know not. Perhaps it is a trial for you, an enjoyment for a time. The prophet has said, my Lord, judge between us in truth. Our Lord is the most merciful, the one whose help is sought against that which you describe. Rabbi la tazarni fardan wa anta khayrul warisin, fatir wa samawati wal ard. Anta waliyi fi dunya wal akhira, tawafani musliman wa alhiqni biswalihin. Rabbana la tuzir. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir wajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. 
Rabbi Shrachli, Sodri, Vayasirli, Amri, Wahlul Orkadatam, Melisani, Yafkahu, Kauli, Wajali, Vazirum, Min Ahli, Allah, Huma Fakihna Fitin, Rabbi Zidni, Ilma, Allah, Huma Inni, As Aluka, Ilman Nafian, Riskan Toyeban, Wa Amalam Mutakabala. Amin summa amin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Surah Al-Hajj. This surah was revealed in Medina. It has 78 verses and 10 stanzas, 22nd by the order of arrangement and the 103rd surah by the order of revolution. The name of the surah is because in the second verse of the fourth stanza, Allah says, Wa adhin fin nasi bil hajj. This is mentioning and announcing about the hajj and pilgrimage is what gives the chapter its name. Regarding the time period of revolution, according to some traditions, uh, this part, uh, a part of this uh, surah was revealed in the last part of Makkah, and a part of it was revealed in the initial phase of Medina. Topics and summaries about, uh, about of the chapter is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has addressed three groups, the sincere believers, the non-Muslims or the disbelievers, and the doubtful hypocrites of Medina. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ya ayyuhan nasu taqu rabbakum inna zalzalata sa'ati shayyun azim. Allah says, O mankind, fear your Lord. Indeed, the convulsion of the final hour is a terrible thing. On the day you see it, every nursing mother will be distracted from the child she was nursing, and every pregnant woman will abort her pregnancy, and you will see the people appearing intoxicated while they, they are not intoxicated, but the punishment of Allah is severe. And of the people is he who disputes about Allah without knowledge and follows every rebellious devil. So now in the first two verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explained one of the initial events on the day of resurrection and what will happen after the blowing of the trumpet has been explained here. And if we see, there are traditions from Prophet ﷺ explaining and narrating the whole event also. The earthquake, which has been mentioned here, will be a prelude to the resurrection. And this will probably take place when the earth will begin to rotate in the reverse direction and the sun will rise in the west. There is a lengthy tradition of Prophet ﷺ that states that the first trumpet will be blown and there will be a general confusion. Then at the second trumpet being blown, all the people will die. And at the third, they will, they, all of them, they will be brought back to life and they will be presented to Allah. At the first blowing of the trumpet, the earth will begin to rock like a boat, which is beaten about by huge waves or it'll just like moving from side to side, like a lamp hanging, which is uh, being moved from side to side by the strong winds. And the condition, the condition would be so, so upsetting and so distressing as it shows in the verse number two is that the intensity and the horror of the earthquake will be so intense that at the time, there will be so much confusion and terror that the mothers will forsake their dear children. At the time, they will be suckling them and pregnancies will abort and people will be all shocked and they will be stunned and they will be so upset and running about in chaos and panic. Allahumma aini ala ghamaratil maut wa sakaratil maut. Allahumma anis wahshati hashri. 
It has been decreed for every devil that whoever turns to him, he will misguide him and will lead him to the punishment of blaze. A'uzu billahi minash shaitanir rajim. Verse number five, O people, if you should be in doubt about the resurrection, then consider that indeed we created you from dust, then from a sperm drop, then from a clinging clot, and then from a lump of flesh, formed and unformed, that we may show you. And we settled in the wombs whom we will for a specified terms. And then we bring you out as a child. And then we develop you that you may reach your time of maturity. So here in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining the different stages of creation. And uh, many times in Quran, this has been mentioned. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explained that the creation of the first human being, that is Adam alayhi salam, was from dust, from clay. And then all the stages after the clay have also been mentioned in Quran. Allah says, human being, uh, Adam alayhi salam, was started, creation was started from Turab. And then there was Tween, and then there was Teen, Lazib, then there was Salsal, and then Allah mentions Salsal, al Fahar. And then later on, after Adam alayhi salam, the human body was given its ability of automatic reprocreation. And they would go on reproducing the male and the female, men and women would then continue the reproduction. And there it would start from a drop of semen containing the sperm and which would land up in the female genital tract. And there would be conception when the sperm and the egg unites and the conceptus would change into a clot. The first, the sperm is known as the notfa, and then the clot is known as the alaka, and then there is a lump of flesh which is known as muzga. And this lump of flesh, as Allah is saying here, it is formed and it is unformed. So first, it does not have bones, and then it has bones. So this is exactly all these stages which have been explained and narrated in Quran more than once. They exactly, today's embryological sciences reconfirm that these are exactly the stages of creation of a baby inside a mother's womb. But if we just think and if we concentrate, all these being brought and all these being taught and presented by whom? Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who did not even know how to read and write. And moreover, 1400 years back, when even no scientific studies or researches or microscopes had proved all these embryological st uh, stages and the knowledge of man. So what does this prove? This clearly proves what? That Quran is a revelation of Allah. It was revealed to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by Allah. And then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, we settle it in the wombs whom we will for a specified time. Then we bring you out as a child and then we develop you that you may reach a time of maturity. And among you is he who is taken in early death. And among you is he who is returned to the most old age so that he knows after once having knowledge nothing. And you see the earth barren. But when we send down upon it rain, it quivers and swells and grows something of every beautiful kind. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning what? Allah is mentioning that after a certain age, we turn you into what? Arzil Umar. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us a supplication which he used to make very frequently. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min arzilil umar. And moreover, the verse also proves that Allah who could create life from a barren, infertile land after rain can for sure, can for sure on the day of resurrection raise all the dead. So this is, this verse in this form has been mentioned at many places in the Quran and it gives proof of what? Of life hereafter, of the day of resurrection. 
That is because Allah is the truth and because he gives life to the dead and because he is over all things competent and that they may know that the hour is coming, no doubt about it, and that Allah will resurrect those in the graves. <coughs> And of the people is he who disputes about Allah without knowledge or guidance or an enlightening book from, from Allah, twisting his neck in arrogance to mislead people from the way of Allah for him whom who just twists his neck in arrogance after listening to the verses of Quran. For what is him? For him in the world is disgrace, and we will make him taste on the day of resurrection the punishment of the burning fire while it is said. What is said? That is for what your hands have put forth, and because Allah is not ever unjust to his servants. And of the people is he who worships Allah on an edge. If he is touched by good, he is reassured by it. And if he is struck by trial, he turns on his face to the other direction. He has lost this world and hereafter that is what is the manifest lust. He invokes instead of Allah that which neither harms him nor benefits him. That is what is the extreme error. He invokes one whose harm is closer than his benefit. How wretched the protector and how wretched the associate. Indeed, Allah will admit those who believe and do righteous deeds to gardens beneath which rivers will flow. Indeed, Allah does what he intends. So repeatedly you notice in Quran that Jannah will be blessed to all those who do combination of belief and righteous deeds. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. Whoever should think that Allah will not support Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this world and hereafter, let him extend a rope to the ceiling, then cut off his breath and let him see, will his effort remove that which enrages him? And thus, have we sent the Quran down and as verses of clear evidence? And because Allah gives whom he intends, indeed those who have believed and those who were Jews and Sabians and Christians and Magians and those who associated with Allah, Allah will judge between them on the day of resurrection. Indeed, Allah is over all things witness. Do you not see that to Allah prostrates whoever is in the heavens and whoever is on the earth and the sun, the moon, the stars, the mountains, the trees, the moving creatures and many of the people. Allahumma ja'alla minhum. But upon many, the punishment has been justified. And he whom Allah humiliates for him, there is no bestower of honor. Indeed, Allah does what he wills. These are two adversaries who have disputed over their Lord, but those who disbelieve will have cut out for them garments of fire. Allahumma ajirna minan nar, poured upon their heads will be scalding water, by which, by which is melted that within their bellies and their skins. Astaghfirullah rabbi min kulli zambin wa atubu alayk. رَبَّنَا اسْرِفْ عَنَّا عَذَابَ جَهَنَّمْ إِنَّ عَذَابَهَا قَانَ غَرَامًا إِنَّهَا سَاءَتْ مُسْتَقَرًّا وَمَقَامًا اللهم اجرنا من النار اللهم اجرنا من النار اللهم اجرنا من النار Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has taught us that when you make the supplication and ask release from hellfire he used to do it three times because he has promised us that when somebody supplicates and asks for release from hellfire three times, then the hell itself intercedes for him. The torment for the people who doubt, who debate, who disbelieve will be what? The dresses of hell tailored for them. Astaghfirullah Rabbi min kulli zambin and there will be dresses of fire and there will be dresses of sulfur, the itchy shirt, which is mentioned in the words of Prophet Sallallahu And then Quran mentions there will be dresses of coal tar. 
which will be black and extremely hot and sticky and awfully offensive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help us all. Help us all adopt libasu taqwa for the fear of all these dresses, the dress of the pious, the dress of piety which you have ordained, which you have ordered us in Quran. Verse number 20, Allah says, this, pool, this scalding water will do what? It will melt what is within their bellies and their skins. Allahumma ajirna min an-nar. Allahumma ajirna min an-nar. Allahumma ajirna min an-nar. And for striking them, there are maces of iron. Every time they want to get out of hellfire from anguish, they will be returned to it. And it will be said, taste the punishment of burning fire. Indeed, Allah will admit those who believe and do righteous deeds to gardens beneath which rivers flow. They will be adorned therein with bracelets of gold and pearl and their garments there will be of silk. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. And they had been guided in worldly life to good speech, and they were guided to the path of the praiseworthy. Allahumma ihtina sirat al mustaqim. Allahumma alhimna rushtan wa aizna min sururi an pusina. Allahumma rahmatika arju, fala takilni ila nafsi min tarfata ainin, wa aslihli shakni kullahu la ilaha illa anta. Ya mukalib al kulubi sabbat kulbi ala dinik. Ya Musarrif al Kulubi Swarrif Kulbi ala Tuaratik. Indeed, indeed, those who have disbelieved and avert people from the way of Allah and from Masjid e Haram, which we've made for the people, equal are the residents therein, one from and the one from outside, and also whoever indeeds a deed therein of deviation in religion or wrongdoing, we will make him taste of a painful punishment. And mention when we designated for Ibrahim salam, the site of the house, which house? Khana Kaaba, saying, do not associate anything with me and purify my house for those who perform tawaf and those who stand in prayer and those who bow and prostrate and proclaim to the people of Hajj and they will come to you on foot and on every lean camel and they will come from every distant place. So it is this verse which gives the chapter its name and that they may witness benefits for themselves and mention the name of Allah on known days over what he has provided for them of sacrificing animals. So eat of them and feed the miserable and poor and needy and let them end their untidiness and fulfill their vows and perform tawaf around the ancient house. Verse number 30, that has been commanded and whoever honors the sacred ordinances of Allah, it is best for him in the sight of his Lord and permitted to you are the grazing livestock except what is, what is recited to you. So avoid the uncleanliness of idols and avoid false statements. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse number 30 <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering and saying what ijtanibu the root word is jim noon ba it means the flanks the sides of the body Ijtanibu is an order meaning to stay away or to keep away, to refrain or to abstain from something. So Wajtanibu means that you need to refrain or to, to stay away from what? From two things is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning the uncleanliness of worships. Of, of idols, that is worshiping of idols. And second is false statements, falsehood, and telling lies. Do we realize what a major sin, what a major sin, falsehood, and telling lies is? Because we surely realize how big 
or what a major sing worshipping idols is allah has said allah has proclaimed in the quran inna shirk la zulmun azim the greatest sin is to find partners with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the greatest lord so paralleled with it where allah says refrain from worshipping idols parallel to it allah also orders for refraining from falsehood or for telling of lies little do we realize how gross falsehood and telling lies is similarly allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered its tanibu refraining regarding what in surah maida verse number 90 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Innamal khamru wal maisuru wal anthabu wal azlamu rijsu min amali shaytan fajtanibu fajtanibu la'allakum tuflihun There is absolutely no doubt that all forms of intoxications gambling stations of idling of idols and of azlam arrows all which were used for for uh, future predictions they are all what rids it is filthy it is sheer and ultimate uncleanliness min amali shaitan from the deeds of shaitan so do what stay away from them stay away from them refrain why so that you might be successful so here allah has ordered refraining from drinking from intoxicants from gambling from polytheism and future predictions little do people realize the severity of falsehood because similar ijtinab is the word for falsehood and for telling lies also remember hadith teaches us that a believer will not have two traits a believer cannot be a liar and a believer will not be a miser a believer a person who says la ilaha illallah and is in the habit of telling lies is a hypocrite as in a tradition of bukhari and muslim prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said ayatul munafiqu ruba there are four signs of a hypocrite idha hadatha qadaba when he talks when he speaks he tells a lie so the first first sign of a hypocrite in surah baqarah has also been explained as telling lies and the first sign of a hypocrite in a tradition narrated by bukhari and muslim is also what is telling lies and then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said is a ahada ghadara then when he makes a pledge when he makes an oath or promise he breaks it is a tumana khana when he is trusted he is distrustful is a khasama fajra when he fights he just erupts he misbehaves and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that your faith will not be perfected until you leave falsehood completely even in a joke should i tell you prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that should i tell you the list of major sins should i tell you the list of major sins and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam added al ishraq billah aqukum bil walidain and then the reciter says that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was reciting when he said the first two things but then when he got up he sat up erect and then he said qaul azur qaul azur shahadat azur three times did he repeat telling lies and witnessing something in falsehood prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has labeled telling lies as ummul khabais mother of all the evils yes it is because we can relate to an incident in the life of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam a person came to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he asked that i i commit four sins and i want to reform myself and i want to give up all of these one by one he accepted and he said that i drink i commit adultery i steal and i tell lies now you advise me which should i start with had it been any one of us we would have asked him to stop drinking or to stop committing adultery or any one of the other three but prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told him to stop telling lies and you know what happened when he was going to drink he thought that if i'll be asked of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asks me then obviously i won't be able to tell a lie and get away so he stopped drinking then he was he was going to commit zina but he again thought 
that if I get caught and if there are witnesses against me, then for the punishment, I will not be able to get away. I will not be able to escape the punishment. So he just left that of that just he just left that also. And then after a few days, he came and he told that Prophet Salavarism, you've advised me and you've given me such a good advice that I it has led to, it has helped me to give me give up all the bad habits. I used to drink and I used to do all the bad things. I've given up all that. Alhamdulillah. And I've escaped all my major sins automatically. So you know what? Telling lies is the back door for all the sins. A person who tells lies, he can always get away from worldly punishments and penalties by telling the false. Because a liar, that is why a liar committing major sins, he knows that he has an escape door open. Prophet وسلم, has ordered all of us. He said that adopt the truthful manner for truth guides towards righteousness and piety and righteousness leads to Jannah and a person sticks to the truth till his name will be entered in the list of the truthful people. Refrain from falsehood for it guides towards sin and sin leads to hellfire, a person will go on telling lies until his name will be included in the list of liars. Now, another thing which we need to relate is who is a liar? Remember, it's just not about telling lies. It is, it is not just about telling lies. There's much more to it. A liar is for sure a person who tells lie. But I again repeat, there's much more to it. A, a liar is a person who likes, who helps, who supports, or who appreciates liars, who takes a party to falsehood, promoting all forms of falsehood, and supporting and helping all forms of liars and falsehoods. And then a liar is also a person who dislikes, who disapproves, who disbelieves the truth and who opposes, who reacts, who retaliates and who negates the truthful people also. Allahumma tuahir qalbi min al-nifaki wa amali min al-riyai wa lisani min al-qazabi wa lisani min al-qazabi wa lisani min al-qazabi wa aini min al-khayanati inna ka ta'lamu man khayanati al-aini wa ma tuhfi al-sudur Verse number 31 Inclining only to Allah, not associating anything with him. And he who associates with Allah, it is as though he had fallen from the sky and was snatched by the birds or the winds, carried him down into a remote place. That is so. And whoever honors the symbols of Allah, it is it is from the piety of hearts. Allahumma aati nafsi taqwaha. And for the animals marked for the sacrifice are benefits for a specified term. Then their place of sacrifice is at the ancient house. And for the religion, we have appointed a rite of sacrifice that they may mention the name of Allah over what he has provided for them of sacrificing animals. For your God is one God. So to him submit and give good tidings to the humble before their Lord who when Allah is mentioned, their hearts are fearful and to the patient, and to the patient over what has afflicted them and the establishers of prayer and those who spend from what we have provided them. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. And the camels and the cattle we have appointed for you as among the symbols of Allah and for you therein is good. So mention the name of Allah upon them when lined up for sacrifice and when they are lifeless on their sides, then eat from them 
and feed the needy and the beggars. Thus we have, sub thus have we subjected them to you that you may be grateful. Their meat will not reach Allah, nor will their blood, but what reaches him is piety from you. Thus we Thus have we subjected them to you that you may glorify for that to which he has guided you and give good tidings to the doers of good. Now, what happened in Makkah, that the people of Makkah used to sacrifice their animals for the sake of their idols, just to please them. And after doing the sacrifices, they used to rub they used to rub and they used to spill the blood of the sacrificed animals on the stations of their idols. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is negating all that and is explaining that the blood and the flesh, uh, the flesh doesn't reach him. What reaches is the piety of the heart of the believers. Remember the purpose and training of all the worships is to produce piety and to create the believers as pious bondsmen of Allah and to produce a feeling and instill a feeling of fear of Allah. Remember, sacrificing the animals should actually be a lesson for us to teach us to sacrifice our desires and wants for the sake of obedience to Allah. The sacrificing animals should teach us to, to sacrifice and to spend charity in the path of Allah and our beloved, our beloved worldly positions in the path of Allah to seek the pleasure of Allah. Indeed, Allah defends those who have believed. Indeed, Allah does not like everyone treacherous and ungrateful. Allahumma ja'alni sabura wa ja'alni shakura. Rabbi aini ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadati. Permission to fight has been given to those who are being fought because they were wronged. And indeed, Allah is competent to give them victory. They are those who have been evicted from their homes without right, only because they say our Lord is Allah. And were it not that Allah checks the people, some by means of others, they would have been demolished monasteries, churches, and synagogues, and mosques in which the name of Allah is much mentioned. And Allah will surely support those who support him. Indeed, Allah is powerful and exalted in might. Allah has promised in this verse that Allah for sure will support those who support him. Allah does not need the support of his bondsmen for running the system and the control of the universe, the sun, the moon, the earth, the heavens. No, supporting Allah means what? It refers to the preaching, to the teaching of Quran, spreading the words of Quran in the bondsmen of Allah and doing what? Implementing the teaching and commandments of Quran on the lands of Allah implementing the messages of Quran, the commandments, the do's and don'ts of Allah in the societies and the states of the earth, making Quran as a system of life, implementing and making Quran and the teachings of Quran and Hadith as a system of government, as a system of judiciary. This is what is the supporting of Allah, and when somebody is bent upon doing all these things, then Allah promises what? His support for him. Verse number 41. And they are those who, if we give them authority in the land, they establish prayer and give zakat and enjoy what is right and forbid what is wrong. And to Allah belongs the outcome of all the matters. Now in verse number 41, Allah is telling what he expects the Muslim leaders to do. How does Allah want the rulers of Muslim states to behave? Four things. Establishing Salah, that is, the system of the Salah is established in the state at all the levels. Number two, setting up the system, the department for Zakat. 
and enjoining and ordering the right and forbidding what is wrong. So this is what Allah wants and desires that if he blesses with the power, with the authority, with the rule of a Muslim state to someone, the rulers are expected to behave like this. And if they deny you, so before them did the people of Nu and Ad and Thamud deny their prophets and the people of Ibrahim salam, and the people of Lut and the inhabitants of Madian and Musa salam, was denied. So I prolonged enjoyment for the disbelievers. Then I seized them and how terrible was my reproach and how many a city did we destroy while it was committing wrong. So it is now fallen into ruin and how many an abandoned well and how many a lofty palace so have they not traveled to the earth and have hearts by which to reason and ears by which to hear for indeed it is not eyes that are blinded but blinded are the hearts which are within the breasts and they urge you to hasten the punishment, but Allah will never fail in his promise. And indeed, a day with your Lord is like a thousand years of those which you count. And for how many a city did I prolong enjoyment while it was committing wrong? Then I seized it and to me is the final destination. Say, O oh people, I am only to you a clear warner and those who have believed and done righteous deeds for them is forgiveness and a noble provision. But the ones who strove against our verses seeking to cause failure, those are the companions of hellfire. Allahumma ajirna minan nar, Allahumma la taj'alna minhum. And we did not send before you any messenger or prophet except that when he spoke or recited, shaitan threw into it some misunderstandings. But Allah abolishes that which shaitan throws in. Then Allah makes precise his verses and Allah is knowing and wise. Rabbi Zidni Ilma, Allahumma Fakihna Fiddin. That is, so he may make what Shaitan throws in a trial for those within whose hearts is disease and those hard of heart. And indeed, the wrongdoers are in extreme dissension. And so those who are given knowledge, Allahumma ja'alla minhum rabbi zidni ilma, those who are given knowledge may know that it is the truth from your Lord and therefore believe in it and their hearts humbly submit to it. Rabbana innana amanna faqfir lana zunubana waqina azab an-nar waqina azab al-qabri waqina azab al-hashri waqina azab al-mizan and indeed Allah Indeed, is Allah the guide of those who have believed to a straight path Allahumma ihdina sirat al-mustaqim Verse 55, but those who disbelieve will not cease to be in doubt of it until the hour comes upon them unexpectedly or there comes to them the punishment of a barren day. Prophet ﷺ has instructed, save yourselves from doubt. Save yourselves from doubt for it was what destroyed the previous nations. We know that right at the start of Quran, Right at the start of Surah Baqarah, Allah, Allah hands us over the kitab and says, Zalik al-kitabu la raiba fi hudallil muttaqeen. You take this book and do not doubt in it, any forms of doubt in it. And then it will become what? It will become a guidance for all those who are pious and God-fearing. And then Allah has ordered, Fala taku nanna min al do not, <clears throat> do not be of those who stay doubtful. Allahumma la taj'alna minhum. 
So all the sovereignty that day is for Allah. He will judge between them. So they who believed and did the righteous deeds will be in the gardens of pleasure. And those who disbelieved and denied our signs for those, they will be humiliating punishment. And those who emigrated for the cause of Allah, and then they were killed or they died. Allah will surely provide for them a good provision. And indeed, it is Allah who is the best of providers. Allahumma kfini an halalika an haramik wa agnini bi fadlika amman sivak. He will surely cause them to enter an entrance with which they will be pleased. <coughs> And indeed, Allah is knowing and forbearing. That is so. And whoever responds to injustice with the equivalent of that which, with which he was harmed and then is tyrannized, Allah will surely aid him. Indeed, Allah is pardoning and forgiving. Rabbi khfir warham wa anta khayru rahimin. That is because Allah causes the night to enter the day and causes the day to enter the night. And because Allah is hearing and seeing, that is because Allah is the truth and that which they call upon other than him is falsehood. And because Allah is the most high and the great. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. Do you not see that Allah has sent down rain from the sky and earth becomes green? Indeed, Allah is subtle and acquainted. Verse 64, to him belongs what is in the heavens and what is on the earth. And indeed, Allah is the free of need, the praiseworthy. So here in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? So many times in Quran is this verse repeated and also a similar verse. And for Allah is what in the earth and what is in the heavens. So many times both these verses are repeated in Quran. Now, there are a few things which we need to revise whenever we read these verses. So what messages and what lessons do these verses convey to us? Number one, the verse provides the proof of oneness of Allah, that all the universe is obedient and submissive, submissive to whom? Just one Allah. The second point is the verse provides the proof of the powers of Almighty Allah over all the beings, over all the creations of the universe. Number three, the verse teaches us to, to be obedient to Allah. It teaches us to be, it teaches us how important and how obligatory it is to be obedient to Allah, to submit, to surrender to Allah, because the whole of the universe, the heavens, the earth, all the creations are obedient and submissive to Allah. The fourth point is, which is very important to remember and realize whenever we come across these verses, is that when all the creations are His, when all the creations of the universe are His, and he is the master of all, and they are all his belongings, then the things which we think are ours are not actually ours. They are actually his. He has handed them all over to us for a temporary lifespan. Since they belong to him, he is the actual master. He is the actual creator. And he has temporarily handed them over to us. So how do we need to relate to all the worldly positions we have? We need to praise him. We need to praise him, exalt him. That is remembrance of Allah is what these verses teach us, number one. Number two, we need to be grateful to him. Gratitude is what we need to remind whenever we go through these verses. And third, we have no reason to be proud of our, our worldly positions. 
We need, we need not be arrogant for all what we own because we need to be humble. Because, you know, have you ever seen a person have you ever seen a person borrowing a thing from a per, from another person and being arrogant and proud of being of boasting about or flaunting about a borrowed thing no so these are all not ours so we need not be boastful or arrogant or go about exhibiting and demonstrating about all these things may it be our knowledge our our property our wealth our riches our mentions or anything we own or possess they are actually not ours they are allah's so we we don't have to be arrogant or proud because of these possessions we just need to stay humbled to allah and to allah's bondsmen also whenever we come across this verse we need to remember this and then when all these things are allah's and he has handed them over temporarily to us when he takes them away from us when he takes his blessings and bounties away from us as a trial, what should we need? What should we do? We need to be patient and we need to stay content with the decisions of Allah. Because if I explain, we have borrowed a thing from a person and the owner asks us to return it. Do we start shouting and do we start yelling and howling and crying? No, we don't. So when Allah takes black one of his blessings we need to stay grateful and we need to stay patient we need to stay content and we need to be grateful that at least he handed over his blessing to us for some time to avail to enjoy to have player for some time at least and we need to be patient and content with the decisions of allah and when all our possessions are not actually ours they are his then how do we need to use them is not according to our own wishes, our own desires and our own, the way we want to know. Giving you an example, a person living in a rental house can, if we imagine we are living in a rental house, now can we add a window or can we add a door where we want to? No, we cannot. We obviously need to obey the landlord and the actual owner of the house so remember these houses our worldly houses we may be thinking that just because on a piece of paper they have been transferred on our name but remember these houses when death is attended to any one of us we will leave them we will leave them as quickly and as empty-handed that a tenant does not even leave the house of his landlord that quickly and that empty-handed they all these houses they are just our houses for a temporary period so how we decorate them how we arrange the gatherings and the parties in them will be according to the do's and don'ts and the limits of allah so this verse teaches us introduces us the concept of mono, monotheism and tawhid and the concept of surrendering of submitting totally to allah almighty and obeying him who is the master of master and who is the master of the universe no doubt about it do you not see that allah has subjected to you whatever is on the earth and the ships which run through the sea by his command and he restrains the sky from falling upon the earth unless by his permission indeed allah to the people is kind and merciful and he is the one who gave you life then he causes you to die and then will again give you life indeed mankind is ungrateful for every religion we have appointed rites which they perform so let the disbelievers not contend with you over the matter but invite them to your lord indeed you are upon the straight guidance and if they dispute dispute with you then say allah is most knowing of what you know Allah will judge between you on the day of resurrection concerning that, concerning that over which you used to differ. 
Do you not know that Allah knows what is in the heaven and earth? Indeed, that is in a record. Indeed, that for Allah is easy. And they worship besides Allah that for which he has not sent down authority and that for which they have no knowledge and there will not be for the wrongdoers any help. And when our verses are recited to them as clear evidences, you recognize in the faces of those who disbelieve disapproval. They are almost on the verge of assaulting those who recite to them our verses, say, then shall I inform you of what is worse than that? It is fire, which Allah has promised those who disbelieve, and wretched is the destination. O oh, people, an example is presented, so listen to it. Indeed, those who invoke besides Allah will never create as much as a fly, even if they gather together for that purpose. And if the fly should steal away from them a tiny thing, they could not recover it from him. Weak are the pursuers and the pursued. They have not appraised Allah with the true appraisal. Indeed, Allah is powerful and exalted in might. Allah chooses from the angels, messengers, and from the people. Indeed, Allah is hearing and seeing. He knows what is presently before them and what will be after them. And to Allah will be returned all the matters. Verse number 78. O oh, you who have believed, do what? Bow and prostrate and worship your Lord and do good that you might succeed. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving four tips or four rules for success where? Here and hereafter. So the four rules and the four key points for success are what? Urqu bow down, wasjudu, prostrate, wa'budu, and do what? And worship Allah, waf'alu khayran, and do good deeds. So remember and notice that three out of the four key points of success lie in what? Salah. As Prophet has said, Mifatihul Jannah, Salah is the key to paradise. It is the door to Jannah and is the first question on the day of judgment. Easy accountability on the day of judgment will also be for all those who offer Salah according to the Sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rabbi ja'alni maqima salati wa min zuriyati. And so do what? And strive for Allah with the striving due to him. He has chosen you and has not placed upon you in religion any difficulty. It is the religion of your father, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah named you Muslim before in former scriptures and in this revelation that the messenger may be a witness over you and you may be a witness over the people. So establish salah and give zakat and hold fast to Allah. He is your protector and excellent is the protector and excellent is the helper. Hasbi Allah, la ilaha illahu, alayhi tawakkaltu wa huwa rabbul arshil azim.